Hey guys, how's it going? I just want to share some thoughts with you that I've had recently about street preachers and um, some other things, but uh, I just want to give kind of a warning um, for people who are who just got saved. When when someone gets saved, usually you know they're really zealous for God, and I was, and I still am, in different ways. But uh, you know. When someone gets saved, they get on YouTube and they see all these quote unquote street preachers going out amongst people with their bullhorns and their banners and um, they're giving the gospel and they're quoting scripture and telling people to repent and stuff. Uh, you know, it's really uh, exhilarating and stuff. It makes you want to get out there and do it, you know, and you think these are real men of God and stuff. And, um, you know, but a lot of times it's uh, really fleshly. I think that there's a bad spirit behind a lot of it. Um, most of these people are false teachers, and I don't even believe a lot of them are saved. Uh, you know, I say that about a lot of people, but the Bible says that there are few that be saved. It says that there are many false teachers. It says that there are many professing Christians. Uh, so that's just Bible. You know, and when, when in the days of the flood, it was only Noah and his family that was saved. And we see lots of things like that all throughout Scripture. Um, but, you know, I do believe there are a lot of people saved, but it's still definitely in the minority. And within, uh, you know, professing Christians, there's, you know, a minority of those who are saved. And, you know, I'm, I'm uh, King James only, and, you know, we're a small group within a group. So, uh, anyways, these street preachers, especially, you know, Jesse Morrell, Kerrigan Skelly, people like that, they are, you know, open theists or they're sinless perfection preachers. That's what most of them are, okay? And uh, I just, I think it's so crazy. Um, there's just a lot of things to talk about, you know, like the methods. Um, a lot of them, you know, it's like they're almost going out to pick a fight. Like, I think that street preaching is definitely biblical. I think that Christians should do it. Christians should witness and, uh, you know, do different things like that. But, we have to do it in the right spirit and, you know, with the, with the right understanding and everything. And, uh, you know, I would, I would suggest, you know, Ray Comfort, as far as I see, I think he does some good work on that. And, uh, you know, in one sense, preaching the Bible, preaching the gospel is going to offend people, no matter what people are going to get upset. Okay. So there's going to be issues, but on the other hand, to go out and just to look for someone to argue with, just to draw a crowd, which Jesse Morrell will say that that's his method. He'll he'll go out and you know try to start controversy just to get more people. And uh, you know I don't see that method anywhere in the Bible. Okay, so that's like another spirit. And you know Jesse Morrell, you know he's a false teacher, anyways. And that's what really bothers me too. A lot of these street preachers are they're sinless perfection teachers, but even if there are some. Who teach you know pretty much they hold the sound doctrine they'll still accept Jesse and people like him as brothers they'll go out and they'll preach against Catholicism and they'll preach against Mormonism because they teach works and, and other false doctrines and rightfully so uh, that they preach against them but they'll do it standing side by side with someone like Jesse Morrell who makes books and videos denying the substitutionary atonement, saying that Jesus Christ didn't pay for future sins on the cross uh, of people who, you know, turn to him. And, uh, and if a Christian, uh, someone who has saved sins after they're saved, then they lose their salvation. So you pretty much have to be sinlessly perfect to maintain your own salvation. And Jesse says that God doesn't know all things for certain. That's not the God of the Bible. That's completely insane. So why would these people who pretty much teach sound doctrine themselves and, and you know, rebuke Catholicism and rebuke Mormonism stand side by side with Jesse Morrell who teaches all these perverse doctrines and he teaches work salvation and they accept him as a brother, you know, brother Jesse, you know, or they'll say, well, he's done a lot of good work for the street preaching movement or something. That's not what it's about, okay? And the ends doesn't justify the means. So... Uh, anyways, you know, there's, there's just so many problems with a lot of this and I'm not saying it's all wrong. There are people who do, do good, you know, good examples. And, uh, so, you know, and a lot of them are, like I said, they're sinless perfectionists and they're also just like strict legalists. You know, I see, uh, 
you know, like they'll go to an NBA game or something like that and they'll be preaching. And yes, a lot of people who go to that stuff are lost and everything else. But I'm saying, you know, is it a sin for a Christian who is truly saved to go to an NBA game? Like what if they go once a year or something? That's just what they do. You know, and people will say things like, uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that's wrong with stuff like that. And I see that the music, the mind control, the scantily clad cheerleaders and all this stuff. Yes, there's a lot of wrong with that. But does that mean that it's a sin to go there? I mean, there's a lot of things that are kind of like gray areas and different people have different convictions and Christians have liberties and a lot of things need to be thought out. And, um, you know, I don't know. But what gets me is they're, they're like that. They'll, they'll draw these lines where the Bible doesn't make lines like that. And yet they're completely fine about, you know, doctrines that Jesse Morrell teaches and stuff. Teaching that God doesn't know the future for certain and all this. And, you know, that's another thing. I just want to talk about, you know, how important Bible doctrine is. You know, in the false church system... You know, they'll emphasize, once you get saved, you need to have fellowship. You need to put yourself under a, a pastor. And, you know, that's what you need to do right away. And then these street preachers, uh, you know, not all of them, but I'm saying, you know, they'll emphasize that you need to get out on the streets and start preaching the gospel and stuff, like, right after you got saved. And, you know, I, I want to emphasize that you need to understand the Bible. Okay, you need to understand God and His Word. Okay, it's take a year or two understanding the Bible, and during that time, do witness and hand out some tracts and do some things here and there, and fellowship if possible. But you need to understand what the Bible says. It's very important, and we can understand what the Bible says. Okay, there's not a lot of doctrines in the Bible that are just, you know, subjective and stuff. When it comes to liberties and things that we do, we can, we can talk about those things. You know, there's some things that the Bible's clear about. I don't think that men should have long hair, and it can be debatable how long it is. You know, I don't think that Christians should get tattoos. I, you know, women have their roles and men have their roles and stuff like that. So there are liberal people who would say that, you know, none of that stuff really matters. But it does. It's in the Bible. But, you know, going to a sports game and stuff like that, it's not in the Bible. Okay, so then people start making lines like where there aren't any. But when it comes to issues like eschatology... Or, you know, Israel, are they God's chosen people or not? Or the character of God, does he know the future for certain? Like, they'll say that stuff doesn't matter. Okay, they'll put that stuff to the side. That's the Bible. They'll put God's word to the side. It's absolutely wrong, okay? Because those things do matter. And someone asked me, or uh, people have asked me, you know, what won't you separate over? Because, you know, I expose a lot of people and, you know, I say that, you know, a lot of doctrine is important and stuff. I think that's the wrong question because that's like, what amount of false teaching do you accept? You know, well, none of it. <laughs> none of it, really. I mean, there are things that, you know, I've suggested Dave Hunt and Ray Comfort and stuff. As far as I know on the major things, I agree with them, but, you know, there are little things that I don't agree with them on that I see as kind of secondary. But for the most part, uh, there are many things that are important, more than just the Trinity or the person of Jesus or, you know, that salvation is by grace through faith. There's, it goes even deeper than that. There are more important things that the Bible does teach that we can't understand, that we need to stand on. You know, as far as Israel, that they're still God's chosen people, that has to deal with the character of God. Okay, does he keep his word? You know, in Romans it says that the, the, the calling and the election of God is without repentance, speaking of Israel as God's chosen people, okay? It wasn't conditional. The, his promise was not conditional upon, you know, how Israel reacted to him. So, these things, you know... Um, concern the character of God and his word and we can know these things and we need to stand on these things and you know how are people going to change or how are people going to get right in their doctrine if we just say that you know this is just what I believe and this is what you believe and we can just agree to disagree on all these things you know and Calvinism that stuff matters okay you know God did not choose for some to go to hell and and, and some to go to heaven and those who go to hell um, they had no chance to repent, no chance to get saved whatsoever. So, so that's an unjust God. Okay, that's not what the Bible teaches at all. We can't accept that. 
So we don't go around saying Brother Jesse and, you know, Brother Calvinist guy, whatever. That's a bunch of nonsense. You know, and easy believism. We, and people who teach, you know, a grace that the Bible doesn't teach, a grace where you just believe the facts and you don't have to submit to Jesus as Lord and all that. You don't have to repent of your sins to be saved. You know, that's a false gospel. Uh, but yeah, the street preachers, there are, a lot of them are sinless perfectionists. Jesse Morell, Kerrigan Skelly, um, you know, Team Jesus Preachers, whatever. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, but there are good ones out there as well. But you just gotta, gotta be aware of, you know, getting into this legalism. You know, legalism at its worst is uh, works salvation. But, um, you know, it's, it's also just putting people in bondage to a certain point. Um... And, you know, we ought to be aware of liberalism, you know, the false uh, love gospel, you know, without repentance and all that, who says you, do, you can do whatever you want, you know. And uh, So there are these lines, and we have to consider all these things, but just be aware of these street preachers that, uh, you know, I think there's just a bad spirit around a lot of it. Uh, and... Uh, can get mixed up in it and get in trouble and uh, it's not of God so but I definitely do encourage street preaching but you know first of all understand the Bible get right in your doctrine you know the doctrine correct sound doctrine sanctifies us you know Jesus said you know sanctify or sanctify them with thy truth you know or, you know thy word is truth so uh, anyways that's just some thoughts, so God bless. I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. This is the gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth, took, him, took on himself the nature of a man, he was crucified and died for our sins, and he rose again on the third day. I want to ask you the most important question of your life. Your joy or sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer to this question. Are you saved? This has nothing to do with how good you are or if you go to a building called a church, but are you born again? In John chapter 3, verse 7, Jesus said, You must be born again. How can you be born again? First of all, you must realize that you are a sinner. Sin is anything in us that does not express or is contrary to the holy nature of our Creator, God. For instance, have you ever lied or cheated or stolen? These are all contrary to the character of God. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 when it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages or the payment of sin is death. We read that in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. This includes eternal separation 
from God and hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. But God loved you so much he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Jesus had to shed his blood and die. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Although we cannot understand how, God said my sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus and he died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true, God cannot lie. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent in Acts chapter 17 verse 30. To repent means to turn around, to confess and forsake one's sins. It's a change of mind and a change of heart and a change of attitude that abhors sins. It agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees that Jesus died for us on the cross. In Acts chapter 16 verses 30 and 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can, but shall be saved. If you would like to learn more about sin, salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ, or anything else concerning the Christian faith, please visit www.acceptyebeconverted.com. Accept ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. AcceptYouBeConverted.com is an anti-church system, Trinitarian, free will, eternal security, King James only, Christian Zionist, Young Earth Creation, Lordship Salvation Ministry, where you can learn sound doctrine, apologetics, hermeneutics, and more. AcceptYouBeConverted.com is mobile friendly and secure from hackers and malware with sightlock. Are you looking for fellowship? AcceptYouBeConverted.com is a virtual community with daily visits from men and women around the globe. Each page includes a comment section. There is a live chat feature that is available in the desktop and mobile version where you can chat with anyone on the site at any time. Join the fun on the message board which you can access by clicking on the link on the footer or by going to acceptyoubeconverted.proboards.com. Acceptyoubeconverted.com offers MP3 Bible teaching through Sermon Audio, which you can access through the website or through sermonaudio.com or the Sermon Audio app. Just search for It Is Written AJV. If you would like to send me your prayer requests, questions, or comments, there is a contact form on the website, also my Facebook and Twitter. Feel free to contact me anytime. I would love to hear from you. Please visit today. Support the ministry. Share with your friends and family. Share on gospel tracks. Pray for the ministry. Become a partner and help spread the truth of God's word far and wide. Introducing new video series for YouTube channel It Is Written KJB 1611. Bible Hermeneutics. Learn how to correctly interpret the Bible. Defending the Faith. Master apologetics and be prepared to answer any objections. KJV Bible Q&A. Answering various questions with the Bible. Doctrines of Devils Refuted. Refuting many false doctrines with Scripture. 
False church system exposed, exposing the many problems within the modern church system. Go preach, all about spreading the gospel. False teachers exposed, Bible teachers held accountable and named by name. KJV defended, exposing corrupt modern Bible versions and teaching all things concerning the King James Bible. And more. Please subscribe and share.